So we've looked at batteries, we've looked at capacitors, we looked at resistors, but what if we use them all together at the same time? And then what happens if I take out the battery and I just have a resistor and a capacitor? So that's what we're gonna look at. So let me show you a quick demo. It's on another video, so just bear with me. I'm gonna play it. So here we go, playing now. So here I have a battery connected to a capacitor and you'll notice when I do that, and the light bulb is my resistor, the light bulb starts off very bright, but slowly gets dimmer. So the brightness is an indication of the amount of electric current going through there. Eventually the current is so low the bulb doesn't light up. Now I'm going to remove the battery and connect just the capacitor to the light bulb after the capacitor has been charged and the battery, the light bulb starts very bright again and then gets dimmer. So I have both a case with a battery, a capacitor, and a light bulb, and it starts off very bright and then slowly gets dimmer. And then I do the opposite, I, well, I don't do the opposite. I take out the battery, I just have the capacitor, and then the light bulb again starts off very bright and gets dim. And we want to model both of these situations, and that's what we're gonna do. So in this case, uh, I have, let's look at both of these situations. In fact, we'll look at this one first, and then I'll go back and look at that one. Uh, the battery is three volts. Uh, the capacitance is one farad, which is really large, uh, but it works out well here. And then I use a 10 ohm resistor. And that's actually, well, it's a light bulb, but it was a pretty small resistor. Now, let's just think about this case right here. So when I plug this in, what's going to happen? Well, charge, gonna, we'll assume we have positive charge flow, which is not true. But let's say I have a positive charge flow from the positive end of the battery that gets to the capacitor and then that creates an electric field that pushes a positive charge off so I'm left with negative charge right there uh, and then I have a current going through here but at first there's no charge on the capacitor so there's no voltage across the capacitor so I get a very high current it's just like that's not even there at all eventually the charge across the capacitor gets to such a low amount that the voltage across the battery and the volt is the opposite of the voltage across the capacitor and then there's no current. So that's why I get to very low current. Now when I have a charge capacitor hooked to a bat to a light bulb or resistor, uh, now the positive charge uh, moves through the resistor, cancels the negative charge over here, so it decreases the charge on the, on the capacitor. And remember there's a relationship between the charge and the capacitor and the voltage potential difference across the capacitor is this. So let's start with this situation right here. Let's use the loop rule, which says that delta V loop is equal to zero. So if I go around any loop in here, starting from any point, I end up at the same point, I get a change in potential of zero. So if I start this way and I go this way, so I have I and that's R. So if I go this way, I'm gonna end up at the positive side. So I get positive minus a negative. So this is gonna be a positive change in potential. So I get delta VC, the change of potential across the capacitor. Now I come down here, I'm going in the same direction as electric current. So it's the same direction as electric field. So I get a negative IR change in potential from Ohm's law. And that's equal to zero. Now you see here that the current uh, is a defined as the rate of change of charge. But the capacitor also depends on the charge. So let's put this all in terms of Q. So if I put this as Q over C, and I put I as delta Q over delta T, now I want to solve for delta Q. So let's move this to the other side or add that to both sides. I get Q over C equals delta R I'm sorry, delta Q over delta T R. And now I can multiply both sides by delta T over R and I get delta Q equals Q delta T over RC. So this is a difficult thing to solve. Uh, the problem here is that the rate, the current depends on the charge but so does this other term in here depend on the charge. So the, uh, the rate of change of charge depends on the charge. That's normally where we would have a differential equation. 
diff, I'm going to spell this, and I don't even know why I'm writing it out, differential equation. But we can solve this numerically. We can solve this by picking a small delta t and just finding the change in charge, assuming that that charge is constant, which it's not, obviously. Uh, and then use that to update the charge and do this in a loop fashion. And that's what I'm going to do in Python now. Okay, so um, I do have one. Okay, so we have this. And what if I want to plot the voltage as a function of time, uh, the voltage across the resistor? Well, the voltage across the resistor, the change of potential, would be IR, which is delta Q over delta T R. But I have R, I have delta Q, I have delta T, so I can plot that each time. And I should get some points that look like this. It should decrease, not linearly. Okay. If I want to make a graph of the current as a function of time, I can do that too, since I have that I is delta Q over delta T. It should also decrease for the, for the resistor. The voltage across the capacitor um, for this case should decrease because the charge decreases. So in this case, if I want to plot the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time, Vc, delta Vc technically, is Q over C. So I know Q, I know C, I can plot that. It's actually going to look like this. It's going to start off uh, high. You know, this one will start off high and go down low. Yeah. Uh, it turns out that the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time would be equal to this, V0 e to the negative T over RC. So we can plot this function as well. You can't, in order to get this, you need to use some differential equations to solve for that, which I'm going to assume that we're not going to do here. But then we can plot these two and show that they're the same. Okay, so I've switched over to Python here, and I got a little head start just to help us out. So the first thing I need to do, I want to definitely make a graph. So this is, I'm going to plot the current in the resistor as a function of time. So I have time, and I have current labeled on there, and then I have my my graph. So these are things of how you make a graph in Python. I don't want to cover that too much. Uh, I, I have to start off with my initial conditions. Actually, let me call this EMF. And then I have that resistor. I have my capacitance. Q, I do have to calculate. Okay, I have to calculate the initial charge on the, uh, the capacitor because I'm going to use that. Now the next thing I have, I need time and I need a time step. And I think a small time step helps out here, but you can try playing around with it. So now I'm going to make a loop. And remember, I'm going to calculate the change in Q, and I'm going to use that to update Q. And then I can just keep doing it over and over again. So the first thing I'm going to do is to make a loop. So while I'm going to say for, for 20 seconds, let's do 10 seconds, 10 seconds. So while T is less than 10. Now the first thing I'm going to do is calculate that charge on the capacitor. The change in charge. I'm sorry, the change in charge. So I already have the charge. So I'm going to say dq equals q times dt divided by r times c. Now be careful with the order of operations here. If you just put rc, it would divide by r and then multiply by c, so you put that in parentheses. This is straight from the thing that I just did. Okay, so now I know the change in charge. I need to find the new charge on the capacitor. Oops, minus. So remember that the charge is decreasing on the capacitor. So if I have the old charge and I have the new, the change in charge, I can find the new charge. That's exactly what this line here does. Remember this is not Q equals Q minus DQ. This is make Q equal to Q minus DQ. Okay, now I can calculate the, the voltage on the capacitor. That'll be interesting to do. Q divided by C. Um, I can calculate uh, the current I equals dQ divided by dt. That'll be useful. Um, 
I need to, oh, I need to update time, right? So time is equal to t plus dt. And now I need to plot. I want to plot the current as a function of time. So f1.plot, spell plot correctly, at t i. And that should do it. And I might have made a mistake, but we'll see. Mistakes are fun. This is the scary part. Ah, I think that worked. Okay, so this says that the current starts off at 0.3 amps, which it should, right? Because there's no voltage on the capacitor. I'm sorry, the, the capacitance voltage is three volts, so I can use IR to find that current, and that's what it should be. And then it dies down after about 10 seconds. It's down to 0.1. I could let this go even longer. Let's say 20. Like that. Okay, let's plot the, uh, the voltage across the capacitor. Okay, so let's change this to uh, a V capacitor in units of volts. And then down here, I'll just change this to PC. There you go. Okay, now here's what I want to do. I want to use my theoretical expression for the voltage on a capacitor. And you would get this from a different equation. I can't remember if I showed that already. I'm, I'm kind of making multiple videos here. So if I didn't, I'll put it right here. Okay, so we know that uh, the theoretical voltage, let's, let's go up here and put a label in here. Label equals numerical. And let's make another graph, F2 equals G curve. I'll make this in red. And label of theoretical theory. Uh, and then down here, uh, what I want to do is calculate, uh, let's say, VCT for theoretical. It's going to be EMF times the uh, E to the negative T divided by R times C. And then so down here, I'll plot F2 dot plot T VCT, theoretical. I think that should work, but we'll see. You never know. Okay, I think that's working. They're right on top of each other. Let's just change this to a 0.1 second time interval and see if we can see a difference. Yeah. So you see there, we do have a difference between the numerical and the theoretical values, but it's very, very small. I could change this to, let's say, big 0.5, make it a bigger difference right there. Okay, so, but even with the 0.1 time interval, it's really close. So the two things agree. And this is what is so beautiful about numerical calculations. Uh, I will leave the modeling of the charging of capacitor to you because you can follow the same thing, okay? But I don't wanna make a 50 minute video and I don't even know how long this one's gonna be. So there's your introduction to RC circuits. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. So let's move to the computer. Okay, what about this situation, charging the capacitor? What's different there? Well, if I start here, I'm gonna have a current going this way. The current goes the opposite way. Uh, I can get the following loop rule. EMF, and then I'm gonna get minus delta VC minus IR equals zero. So it's similar to the last equation, so it's a little bit more complicated. Again, I'm gonna use my definition of uh, the voltage across the capacitor and the current, and I get EMF minus Q over C minus delta Q over delta T R equals zero. Now I wanna again solve for delta Q. So let's add this term to both sides and I get delta Q over delta T R equals EMF minus Q over C. Now I can multiply both sides by delta T over R and I get delta Q equals EMF 
delta t over r. That seems not right, but uh, minus q delta t over rc. So it, it's similar to the other term. I just have this, the other expression, I just have this term right here. Oh, now, now we can plot what we want. So if I want to plot the voltage as the function of time, I can do that. And I just need to calculate the voltage across, if I want to calculate the voltage across the capacitor or the resistor, it doesn't really matter. Let's do the, uh, the let's do the resistor, VR. So VR, it should go like this. So VR is equal to IR, which is delta Q over delta T R. So I already solved for delta Q, I already solved for delta T, so that's easy to plot. If I want to plot the current, I is this delta Q over delta T. I have that too. So I can plot both of these things. So the current as a function of time looks like this too.